Don't let the memories escape. It's the title of our time together this morning, and we're going to be in Deuteronomy chapter 4. So you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 4. We've already paused this morning to remember those who are in our community that we lost this year. And it's during holiday seasons, especially difficult experiencing a loss during this year, to think about the empty chair, the empty spot at the table. And know that if you are one who has experienced loss this year, you have been prayed for. And you can find comfort in this family. And as we've remembered those who we have lost, I, you probably, like me, have spent some time this week reflecting on this past year. What were the highs? What were the lows? It's something about the change from December to January, the moving of a number 23 to 24, that somehow gives us a fresh look at life, that we can set a season of our life behind and look forward to something to come. And that's exactly where we find the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter four. I regularly come back to this passage year after year because of its meaning and application to our yearly cycle. You see, the children of Israel had been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. They're headed towards the promised land and the book of Deuteronomy is Moses' instructions to Israel before they go to the promised land. Canaan is just across the Jordan, but Moses wants to give the Israelites some last instructions. And he begins the book with a great storytelling of how God had delivered Israel from Egypt, how they crossed the Red Sea, how they'd been protected in the wilderness. And we pick up the story in Deuteronomy chapter four, verses seven through nine. This is Moses speaking. For what great nation has a God as near to them as the Lord our God is near to us whenever we call on him? And what great nation has decrees and regulations as righteous and fair as this body of instructions that I am giving to you today? But watch out. Be careful never to forget what you yourselves have seen. Do not let these memories escape from your mind as long as you live. And be sure to pass them on to your children and to your grandchildren. Moses recounts the memories of how God had provided for them and leaves them one simple instruction. Don't let these memories escape. Remember what God has done for you this year. Well, listening to a podcast a couple weeks ago, a favorite author of mine was talking about a family practice that he does with his family to make things memorable. And anytime they're, they're on a trip or in a particular occasion where it feels fitting to pause, what they'll do as a family is they'll, they'll call it out and they say, hey, we need, to, we need to stop and we need to take a mental snapshot. So whether they're looking over a beautiful vista or enjoying a wonderful dinner together that they absolutely want to remember, they all pause for 10 seconds to take in the sights and the sounds and the smells to leave an imprint on their minds of that particular moment that they will be able to recall in the future. Likely you've had a moment like that where you've paused to remember. You've been in a place and you know this is maybe the last time that we'll all be together. The last time I'll have the opportunity to visit this place or the view is so compelling. I have to take it all in. Don't let these memories escape. So what I'd like to do with you this morning is a little bit of a walk down memory lane of some things that we together have accomplished this year. I've got a lot of numbers I want to run past you. Now, please don't glaze over. These are fun numbers, not the boring numbers, okay? So there's two different categories, right? And this week, I've had the pleasure of talking with a few people, checking with our treasurer, and kind of digging through some interesting things that have happened this year in our church and in our community. So the first number I want to share with you 65,012. That's the number of dollars given in community assistance to people in this community. You know, the second Monday of the month, people come in and apply for assistance, and we're able to support them through the proceeds that come in through the Great Stuff Thrift Store to the tune this year of $65,000. That blessed a total of 260 families right here in this community. That's a pretty cool number because of the mission and the ministry of this church. 56 is the next, next number. Any guesses? 
the number of senior exercise classes we've hosted this year. We brought that back after the pandemic, started back in June. If you want to exercise with a group of seniors, get your workout on Tuesdays and Thursdays down at the Annex. They'd love to have you join them. Next number, 154. It's the number of times our facility has been used this year, 2023. Now, what do I mean by uses, right? Well, this is excluding our regular worship gatherings, our regular Wednesday night ministries, kind of everything that goes along with regular ministry for the church. This is funerals, birthday parties, events that happen in this facility. And if you chart that over the course of the year, that means about every three days, something aside from a worship service or a regular ministry of the church is happening in this community, in this building. And I, I think that that's pretty cool. 200 is the next number. That's the number of cards that CTA students put together for hospice patients over the holidays. Our schools are involved in mission. Uh, 800, that's the number of hours our Keene Avenue Elementary School students have volunteered at Lake Whitney Ranch this year. I had the privilege of talking with our principals this week. We were shooting some numbers back and forth, and they were excited to share what God has been doing. Todd also shared with me that about every year, KES students raise about $2,000 towards a particular mission project that the school embraces. Our students are involved in ministry. 91 is the next number. That's the percent of Southwestern Adventist University students engaged in service. Nine out of 10 students at Southwestern have been involved in some type of community service project this year. That's a really cool stat. The next one, one. That's the amount of fellowship halls and kitchens we've put together and renovated this year. Uh, if you want to come check it out, haven't seen it yet, we've got the Agape Feast and Communion Service tomorrow evening at 5.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Um, you want to be there for that, bring some bread, some soup, bring in the new year with your forever family. And you, we as a forever family contributed $121,978 towards the Fellowship Project this year. Now, the total project was 180, 185, something like that. We've, we're raising money back in 2022 towards it as well. But in 2023, $121,000 towards renovating a space that's multi-purpose and blesses our community. This number, I shared it just a moment ago, 56,752, given towards our Christmas tree offering. 715,151 is the total amount you have contributed towards church ministries and operations in the year 2023. Of course, excluding today and the you know, last couple of days of the year. But three quarters of a million dollars you've put towards the ministry and operations of this church, which means that things like Pathfinders and, and media and the church choir and a whole list of other ministries can operate and we can keep the lights on, we can make sure the space is air conditioned and we can further the mission and ministry of this church. All told, 1.3 million, 1 million dollars given in local donations. That combines church ministries and operations, special projects, special ministries that you've given to, all put together, money it directly impacting this church, 1.3 million. Next number, 3,185,807. That's the total number of tithe dollars that you've contributed. Now, so it's a common question we get. What's the difference between local budget and tithe? Well, tithe goes towards the pastoral positions that we have here in this church. We have eight full-time pastors. That means that by contributing tithe, you're making sure that our pastoral team is fully staffed. You're also ensuring that the greater mission of the work of the Texas Conference, which covers North, East, and South Texas, we partner to make sure that Jesus' name is proclaimed in the rest of Texas through our tithe dollars. I think it's so important for us to realize that we have a local mission, but we also have a regional mission as well. By contributing tithe, we partner in those ways. The next number, this is probably my favorite number out of this whole list, 17,451. That's the amount in dollars for the little lambs offering that our children have collected. Yeah, $17,000 from fishnets and $1 bills. Like, I think that's pretty cool. Can we give it up for our kids who faithfully collect every week? And you may be wondering, what does that go towards? Student aid at Chisholm Trail Academy and at Keene Adventist Elementary School. That's what that money goes for every single week. Okay, a few more numbers. Well, a lot more numbers. 154. 
It's the number of worship services we've had this year, if you combine all three worship services. And you look at that, hey, the worship services and everything, but it's something. Because there were 154 opportunities this year for someone to encounter a beautiful person from the Keene Seventh Avenue Church and to encounter Jesus in a meaningful way. And an opportunity for us to come together as a family. I don't know about you, I look forward to family worship with Melissa and Micah. I look forward to family worship with you. And we get to do it every week together. Through those services, 48,240 total attendance this year. That's the number of times someone has walked through the doors of the church and sat in one of our worship services. It's incredible to think how many people have come through. 47 is the next number. That's the number of creative arts volunteers that we have. Those that serve in graphic design, camera operation, make sure things go up on the screen, they look good and they sound good. Pastor Ruben's leading that team. He's also looking for some more volunteers. So if you want to pop up to the media room afterwards today, you can join his team. This team makes sure that every week, those of you watching online or listening to the podcast later, have access to what goes on right here inside of these four walls. All told, 25,738 streaming hours watched over the past year. That's people watching our worship services and the total number of minutes that they've been uh, watching those. And total number of hits we've received on across our social media accounts, 146,488. The number of times that somebody through the algorithm is encountering what's going on here. 230, the approximate number of worship leaders that we've had, whether they've done garden of prayer, called for offering, sang in a choir, or led worship. 230 people participating in worship leadership. And by the way, are you wondering how many songs we've sung this year? Yeah, 285. Number of individual songs, unique songs that we have sung. Uh, all told, 11 times we have sung, as across three services, the song, Great Are You, Lord. And for some of you, that means a lot. And for others, that means nothing. That's okay. You can look up the song later. But in this service in particular, we've had two songs that have tied for the most sung song. One, Great Are You, Lord. The other, Goodness of God. Both sung six times this year. Another number 7,462. That's the amount of Bible school letters we've received this year. You know, we run one of the largest prison ministry correspondence Bible schools in the country. That means that 7,462 times someone has filled out a Bible study, written a letter to one of our Bible school volunteers, and has had positive growth in their spiritual journey in prison. And there's a total number of 90 Bible school volunteers that process those on a weekly basis. God's kingdom, even in the prison. 59, it's the number of prayer shawls that have been given this year. Not just to babies, but we also give them to those that are in need or going through a particular crisis. And by the way, we've dedicated 13 children this year. I think that that's pretty cool. If you want to make that number grow over the year, you know what to do. Um, (laughs) Two pastors welcomed this year. Two pastors ordained and two pastors ruptured their Achilles. Oh, that's not on the screen. Um, That's just personal experience. Last couple numbers, 23 baptisms this year. 23 baptisms. People saying, I want to give my life to Jesus and I want to do it publicly. And last number, one big thank you. Because I've gone through a list of numbers. You're probably glazed over by now. You're like, is this a really long-winded appeal for money? No. No. What this is, is a look back and a recognition that through you, God has done amazing things. We've come together as a body and decided to be conduits of the mission and the ministry of Jesus Christ right here in King, Texas. And these numbers tell only a small story of all of the impact that the Forever family is making even today. Someone stopped me after first service and says, you know, you shared all those numbers, but you didn't share about what individuals are doing. And it's impossible for me to know what every single one of you is doing for mission and ministry, but know that it is appreciated. Because as a pastoral team, there's eight of us pastors, there's 11 uh, counting office staff and everyone. Like we, can, we can only do so much, but together we can do so much more. 
And we've also journeyed this year through scripture. Remember last year, we launched into a prayer series that was 13 weeks long. Remember, you should have seen the look on your face when I said 13 weeks on prayer. Really, we're gonna do that? Yes. As it is, our first sermon series of this year. And we focused on what it truly means to pray. What is prayer for us in our spiritual lives? Ian Bounds puts it this way. What the church needs today is not more machinery or better, not new organizations or more and novel methods, but people, people whom the Holy Ghost can use, people of prayer, people mighty in power. The Holy Ghost does not flow through methods, but through people. It does not come on machinery, but on humanity. He does not anoint plans, but persons, persons of prayer. And this year, the Holy Spirit has fallen mightily on you as an individual and as a body. And God has blessed you through that. Prayer is an open-ended invitation to participate in the course of human history. And we are actively changing the story here in King, Texas. And I'm thankful for that. Next, we looked at the example of Daniel and his biography under a series called Resolve. And Ellen White puts it this way, Prophets and Kings, page 545. From the story of Daniel's deliverance, we may learn that in seasons of trial and gloom, God's children should be just what they were when their prospects were bright, bright with hope and their surroundings, all that they could desire. Have you had some highs this year? Have you had some lows? I hope and pray through all of the highs and lows that your faith has been grounded in Jesus. In that through all of it, you've been able to process it with a steady calm that surpasses understanding. Remember, the conditions of the lion's den don't matter when God is with us. And God is with us, amen? So it does not matter what we encounter. Our pastoral team took took us through a series of unlikely witnesses of David, of Sarah, Samson, Jephthah, giving us more glimpses and examples of men and women of faith that have a resolve and tenacity to place their life, their hope, and their trust in Jesus. And then we kicked off our school year back in August with Recalibrate, focused on the kingdom parables. What does it mean to live in the kingdom of grace? Ellen White puts it this way, My Life Today, page 243. There's a great work to be done in our world, and as we approach the close of earth's history, it does not lessen in the least degree But when the perfect love of God is in the heart, wonderful things will be done. Check out, we can reverse engineer this for just a moment. I have observed this year, witnessed wonderful things being done. My conclusion, the love of God is in your heart. The love of God is in your heart. Our heavenward mind moves us towards earthward good. It must. Our focus and our look at Jesus must propel us towards being about the good of the people around us. We focused on Ephesians and their series Alive. Ellen White commenting, there is no limit to the usefulness usefulness of one who putting aside self makes room for the working of the Holy Spirit upon his heart and lives a life wholly consecrated to God. The Spirit furnishes the strength that sustains striving, a union of divine and human endeavor, a close connection, first, last, and ever, with God, the source of all strength that is absolutely necessary. Our connection with God is what gives us our purpose, our meaning, and our calling. We are most alive when living our God-given purpose. You want to be alive? Be after God's business. And finally, we concluded this year with a look at the Prince of Peace. And it was a wonderful series. I don't know about you, but just sitting in Luke chapter two, verse 14, with the angelic proclamation for five weeks did something for my soul. And I hope it did something for you too. We learned the words of Bob Goff here. God's love is a love that never grows tired or is completely finished finding ways to fully express itself. You will always live in a universe exploring the highs and the depths and the the breadth of God's love for you. And it's always changing, always moving. And remember, if you forget anything out of this year, remember this, God actually likes you. He wants to be in relationship with you. He appreciates the connection that he and you have. And last week, 
Can we talk about last week for a moment? 1,200 people in this room. The outpouring of appreciation for last week's service. You have blessed my inbox and the time in the lobby. You can send me those emails any day, okay? Jesus was in the room. And if you weren't here, you just missed something. I got no caveat or anything. You missed something. Jesus was in the room. So for us in this look at 2023, now 2023 is in the rear view mirror. You got a day and a half left to correct anything you wanted to over this year, okay? If not, just go ahead and bump that resolution into 2024. Everything's gonna be okay, all right? But what we do is we take our memories with us into 2024. Just like the Israelites sojourning from the desert into the promised land, maybe 2023 felt like a desert for you and 2024 is looking like the promised land. What the Israelites could take with them was their memory of God's provision. And we must do so as well. I don't share numbers, statistics, and do a sermon over you before you to be like, hey, look at this. Wow, cool. What I, I share, the reason I share is so that we as a body will remember the goodness of God in the many ways that he's shown up in our lives this year. Ellen White in her book, Life Sketches, page 196, you probably know this quote. We have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and is teaching in our past history. You got nothing to fear for 2024 except that you forget what God has done for you in 2023. So remember, don't let the memories escape. Remember as a kid, loved pulling out the photo albums and there's just something about printed photos curated in an album. Kids these days just won't understand, right? You could pull it out and you, you blow the dust off and they're like, photo albums smelled like something, right? Nostalgia, that's what they smell like. And you thumb through the photo albums and I love pulling out my mom and dad's old ones because you, you know, as a kid, you could look at them and be like, that's a funny haircut. And you know, like, what were you wearing there? And you know, they get to tell you stories. It's funny how fashion just kind of repeats itself, right? What used to be as fashionable is now fashionable again. But what will we do with our memories? Will they sit like our photo albums on our bookshelves only brought down for special occasions? Or will we regularly draw up memories of how God has provided for us? Will we pull out those albums and tell our children and our grandchildren about what God has done in 2023? You see, Moses wasn't just worried about the current generation. He was worried about the generations to come. He says, these memories will be a generational foundation for children and grandchildren. That as you share about God's provision, it will be the rock that they can settle on so that they know that their hope is secure in Jesus. I want to do something a little bit different this morning. I want to take a moment, all of us here, a literal moment, 60 seconds. And what I'd like for you to do is to think in your mind. You can close your eyes, look up, look down, whatever you'd like to do, but close your eyes for a moment and think about this question. What memory are you holding on to this year? The one of God's provision, the one where God showed up. So I'll give you 60 seconds. What memory are you holding on to this year? I hope you have the memory in mind. Something that God has done for you this year. That you're holding on to that you're not going to let escape. And likely you went down a path of memory lane 
of the good and the bad, the highs and the lows, and you've walked a journey through this year of God's provision and protection on your life. And maybe you resonate with these truths, that this year God has moved mountains big and small, that there were little things in your life that you're like, I don't know if God cares about that, and God showed up. Or the big things in your life that you knew would only take a miracle. And it would only be God's intervention if it was to truly come about. God has moved mountains big and small for you and me, for our community as well. And also, God didn't need us, but he chose us. You and I both know, as we come together as a broken community, individuals striving in the way that God could choose far better people than us. God could choose someone better than me. In fact, he doesn't even need us at all. He could just make everything happen. That's who God is. But at his core, God wants to partner in relationship with his creation to bring about restoration. God didn't need us, but he chose us to make a difference right here in our community. God's work in 2023 inspires hope for what's to come in 2024. If God can do that with 2023, how much more can he do in 2024? Because I believe the best is yet to come. We haven't seen anything yet. The best is yet to come. So don't let the memories escape. Thanks for stopping by. I hope and pray that this message was a blessing for you. If you'd like to see more content like this, we need your help. You can support the Keene Seventh Adventist Church media ministry by going to AdventistGiving.org, finding the Keene Seventh Adventist Church in Texas, and then putting in your donation to the media line. Your faithful giving and support allows us to spread the gospel online for you and others to participate in. Thank you for your continued support of the Keene Seventh Adventist Church.